Welcome back, you guys, to Choking Hazard. My name is Zach, and by my title and thumbnail, I hope you guys have watched the new show in... <laughs> This superhero show just slaps. There's great personalities in it. There is amazing villains. There's great fight scenes. There's blood, guts, and gore. It's amazing. I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't watched it, so go watch it now and then come back to this video later, okay? Please do that. I just don't want to spoil the show for anybody because I went into the show blind thinking it was kind of like a Justice League ripoff. I was severely mistaken because of that. And then after watching the finale, I became a huge fan. And when I become a huge fan of something, I decide to look into the show or content a little deeper. So that's exactly what I did. I went on, I went online because I'm not gonna buy all the comics, but I went online, read the comic books, and I have to say, there's quite a few differences between the show and the comic book. So what I'm going to do for you guys today is I'm going to go ahead and compare the show and the comic book, tell you what the differences are, and explain which differences and changes I like the best. Let's ask, which is better, the show or the comic book? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! First thing you'll notice when reading the comic book is that the art style is not as clean as the show. I can tell that the comic book is going for a more hand-drawn look because if you just look at some of the pictures, you'll see additional lines where it almost looks like the drawer or the artist might have messed up a little bit and it just kind of went with it. Personally for me, I like the clean look of the show better. I actually don't mind gritty artwork at all. I prefer it most of the time, but I really think that the comic book's art style doesn't really differentiate itself from other comic books in its genre. So when the show made the artwork extra clean, it made this very interesting contrast between the very, very brutal and messy violence and the very, very clean, bright artwork. It sort of makes the violence pop a little bit more than in the comic, and that's why I prefer the show's art style over the comic book's art style. Hey, this is Editing Zach from the Future. Just wanted to say about the art style. The art does change over time in Invincible. As the comic book goes on, it becomes less hand-drawn look and looks way more clean now, like in the current issues, than the old issues. So I think maybe the show took notes from the current issues instead of the old issues in art style. So I could be mistaken, but uh, yeah, I think the art style does clean up quite a bit later. So that that's, there you go. The second thing that I noticed right off the bat is that the love interest in the comic book and the love interest in the show are just completely different. So Adam and Eve in the show seems more like a friend until the end, I guess you say. Until the end of the show, like she could be potentially a love interest after Invincible or Mark breaks up with Amber. Why are we fighting? We're fighting because you lied to me. You made me feel stupid and unimportant. It's a secret identity. And because you don't trust me. I'm trusting you now. <laughs> now, in the comic book, Amber is barely in the comic book. Amber is like, I don't know, she, she's in like a couple of scenes. She does complain a couple of times, just like in the show where it's like, you know, where were you? Why aren't you, you know, coming to certain things on time? But she's really not in the comic book that much. As in Adam and Eve, she has the hots for Invincible in the comic book, 100%. You, you know that she wants Invincible. They're going to hook up later or they're going to start dating. You know it. She's 100% the love interest in the comic book. There's multiple instances when Adam and Eve just flies into Invincible's room and hangs out with him when his parents aren't around. And then when Rex cheats on her and they break up, the first person that she goes to is invincible and she like lays her head on his lap and she just you can tell that she wants the invincible dick that's all i'm saying the invincible dick is what she wants and it's pretty obvious in the comic book i find making amber the main love interest actually gives invincible a peter parker-esque dilemma of balancing a social life with his superhero responsibilities and the show capitalizes more on that with amber than the comic book does in the comic book he doesn't have much of a balancing act when it comes to his social life and being a superhero because most of his friends are superheroes and his dad is a superhero. So his family knows that he's a superhero. Everybody knows he's a superhero. His love interest in the comic book is really Adam and Eve and Amber's kind of it's kind of sidelined in the background. I think giving Amber more spotlight actually gives Mark, or AKA Invincible, more humanity, making him easier to connect with as an audience member. He just feels more like a regular person with Amber than 
being Mr. Invincible most of the time, which in the comic book, he's most of the time invincible, and in the show, I feel like he's more or less Mark most of the time. The Brutality. Why did you make me do this? You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Think, Mark! Another big one is the brutality. The brutality in the comic book is not nearly as shocking or brutal as in the show. And personally for me, this was a very big put off because I actually really like the absurd brutality of the show. Now the comic book does show off a lot of blood, but it doesn't give off that same dark tone as in the show. You don't get the same impact to the punches and hits. You don't get the same weight when someone gets like smashed into the ground or anything like that. It doesn't have that same visceral feeling when someone gets absolutely splattered. I have two good solid examples kind of showcasing how the show is a lot more brutal than the comic book and one of them is when Omni-Man fights the Guardians of the Globe. <laughs> They don't really showcase a big fist fight or anything like that. There isn't a bunch of splatter and guts and, you know, him ripping people's faces apart and snapping necks. There's none of that. It basically just kind of cuts to the point after everybody's dead, and they don't really showcase the brutality of Omni-Man fighting everybody. Another crazy scene that kind of showcases the brutality difference is the train scene where Omni-Man grabs Invincible and then slams him into the train and kind of basically makes Invincible watch these people just splatter on top of him. Which is just the most brutal, sicko thing I've ever seen in my life. But in the comic book, he's fighting Invincible, sort of like in the show, except instead of the train scene where he grabs him, like, like thrusts him into the train, he just kind of gets punched into the train, and you... You don't really get to see anybody die. You just have to kind of assume that it killed a bunch of people. And you see a couple of people fly out the windows of the train and things like that. But you don't see the aftermath and all the blood and guts and shit of all these innocent civilians. It's just not nearly as brutal. And it's obviously made for more of a teen audience. Another change they made is that Invincible is just way more sure of himself in the comic book than he is in the show. In the show, he's very naive and he's starting to learn to use his powers. And he kind of has to do that in the comic, but he's more headstrong and he's more uh, willing to get his hands dirty than in the show. For example, there's a scene in the comic book where they're fighting this villain. And I'm trying not to spoil anything because possibly this character could be in the next season of Invincible, the show. But I'm not sure. Anyways, what happens is Invincible finds out that this teacher is actually rigging kids to explode, kind of like uh, suicide bombers. These kids are exploding and dying, and you find out that the teacher is actually killing these kids purposely because his son got bullied so bad that he ended up taking his own life, which is pretty fucking dark. That's dark, sh fucked up shit. For the teacher's last villainous act, he's gonna try to blow himself up and kill and wipe out Adam and Eve and Invincible at the same time. And what he's trying to do with that is that if he kills them, he'll get more publicity on what happened to his son. Invincible in the comic book says, fuck that, and just grabs the dude and just tosses him in the air and just has him explode. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, and the next scene in the comic book, he's just kind of going about his normal day-to-day -day shtick without actually thinking about the ramifications of his actions. You know, like killing somebody. He didn't even think about that for a second. Think, Mark! In the show, he accidentally got knocked over by these aliens and he ended up crushing this old lady. Oh shit! Oh my god! And he felt really bad about that and he felt even worse finding out that she died. So it just kind of, I feel as though the morality of Invincible is completely different in the show compared to the comic book. The comic book, he seems more just kind of willy-nilly with what he's doing. As in, in the show, there's kind of a statement that is made by Omni-Man where it's like, you know, this is this is real life. You gotta, it's completely different. There's, you know, blood, guts, there's death. You have to get used to that. Um, as in, in the comic book, it almost seems like he already knows that shit, which is kind of weird. So there are some events that are kind of flip-flopped when it comes to time period between the show and the comic book. So, for example, there's a couple little ones, and they don't really matter too much. One of the examples is that the robot 
that turns into a human. You know, I mean, he's always a human, but you know what I'm talking about. He gets that cloned body from the Blue Man's Group Brothers or whatever. Um, that happens way, way after the events that take place with Invincible and Omni-Man. Another event that happens is when there's that crazy dude that is kidnapping people and turning them into robots. That happens after the fact when it comes to Omni-Man and Invincible fighting. That happens way after that. There's a couple little events that are tweaked in translation between the comic book and the show. One example is that Guardians of the Globe fight the two blue brothers that are attacking the White House in the very beginning. And I feel as though the show added that so that you get to know who the Guardians of the Globe are before they die. And they don't really get, you don't really get any screen time with them in the comic book. Basically, you know that they're Guardians of the Globe. They end up dying really fast after you meet them. And that's about it. As in, I feel as the show kind of like, introduces you to them before they die. I feel as though because of that, the impact of their death hits just a little bit harder. Just a little bit, but just a subtle difference. Another scene that really changes the show and the comic book like drastically and differentiates themselves is the scene where Omni-Man fights the Guardians of the Globe. He kills them without even breaking a sweat or getting wounded or tired or anything. So he basically kills them and just leaves the area and nobody has any evidence against them. He doesn't ever get his ass beat, he never passes out, he never has to go to the hospital, none of that ever happens. The The government doesn't even know about him killing the Guardians of the Globe until he goes crazy and starts beating the shit out of Invincible, and the scene where he's like knocking people into trains and blowing, you know, hitting him into a mountain and having an avalanche happen, that's the only time the government actually realizes he might be a bad guy. Other than that, there's no investigation. Which I feel as though the show also does a better interpretation of the events and in, in making him be like, you know, kind of getting hurt so that he has to go to the hospital. And there's like this kind of investigation thing with the government where the government's like trying to find out like why Omni-Man killed the Guardians of the Globe. And they kind of understand that Omni-Man's a bad guy. They That never happens in the comic book. So I find that to be more compelling in the show than the way they did it in the comic book. But yeah, that's about it, you guys. At least for season one, that's majority of the differences I could see and for what I can see I think I might like the show just a tad bit better than the comic book I know the comic books um art gets a little bit better and I know that the brutality gets a little bit more intense later in the comic book but for right now just saying as a new reader I like this show just a little bit better but I'll go ahead and keep on reading you guys if you guys want me to so go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you like this type of content thank you guys so much for watching and see ya hey you made it to the end that means you must enjoy my content so go ahead and love tap that subscribe button for me and if you don't like my content subscribe anyways my videos are proven to make your schlong longer follow me on twitter and instagram for discussions and movie topics and thank you so much for the support you guys are awesome see ya